Hello, and here we are again for another game of Trans-Siberian Railway Simulator. Prologue this time. So I have been lucky enough to get the playtest of the Prologue game. Uh, I did do a review of the uh, playtest, which is just literally having a look at the train and moving it forwards and backwards a few feet. But this game now expands on that and gives you a few more tasks. I will admit I have played this through once, so I know where it will go. Perhaps there will be a slight variation the second time I play it. I don't know. I suspect not. But it's well worth showing you because I really love this. Um, I'll just walk through what I've got in terms of uh, settings. So audio, I've just cut the master volume down a little bit, taking the music off because it'll be really annoying as I'm talking right now, more so than my actual voice. Um, you can change the keys. I can't be asked though. Um, you can shortcut a lot of the stuff to your keyboard but I'm not going to because I want to press the buttons in the train. You'll see why later. Graphical options, you'll see here. I'm leaving it on Epic. It does struggle a bit later on in the game with my machine, uh, only very slightly. I'll drop down to about 30 FPS, but um, try to ignore it. It's good most of the time. Uh, I really want you to get a good feel for this visually because I think it's actually really good. Uh, and that's basically it. So let's start a new game. And we're going to go for survival because that is really what the game wants you to do. And we are away. And this is all real time, so I'm not editing this video unless I completely ball something up, in which case you might find cuts in the video sequencing. But let's just play it in real time as much as I can. I know you can read the text on the screen, so I'm not going to be too worried about talking over the voice here, uh, the announcer here. So, these are meant to be real life stations, and I don't know which point in time they're supposed to be, but they're full of life. And this is one good thing that I love about this. There's passengers, there's cars, and you'll see more cars move around later as we go on. It's a bustling, bustling train station, and this is what you want. It's not a dead area. So, I'll let you read whatever's coming up on here. It just wants me to do some train driving, basically, and it will want me to collect some food. So, as you'll see at the top left hand corner, there's a few things you need to maintain. So, I'm just going to go and pick up some bits and pieces. So, here, uh, as you can see, we have tins of food. I'm just adjusting my keyboard because it's decided to. It's not working, and I need to do something really random to it. Anyway, there we go, it's working. So, um, I'm just going to press continue on there. It just gives you a little tutorial. It just tells you about the temperature, bottom right hand corner, watch the temperature, character stats at the top left, we know about that. So it's telling us to go and buy some stuff. So I'm going to buy a few tins of sprats, torch. Uh, I'm not actually going to need that for this. I, as I say, I played it through once. I need something to drink. So I'm just going to grab a few bottles of milk and let's just buy a couple of onions because who doesn't like raw onions and a knife in case we want to stab someone i never actually remember what this guy's selling bread that's why i like bread so at the bottom of the screen you can flick through your inventory you can have five things that you can pick from if you need anything else you press the i key i've got to go through all this there we go and there's some bread and i can just literally just drag and drop that into any of those slots and uh, utilize it um i don't want to be holding anything like that it's wanting me to go to my locomotive but i'm not going to do that right now i'm going to go to the mafia shop uh, these soviet cars are so cool look at these these are just larders and i don't know what this is but maybe that's a larder as well but these are all larders so cool love this era love this setting there's a homeless alcoholic who he's just having a good old time. You can't interact with these people. Um, you can shoot them and stab them, which you'll possibly find out later, depending on the mood I'm in. But you can't punch them or talk to them randomly. You can talk to certain people if they're part of the story, but um, there's a lot of people going on, so they obviously can't allow you to talk to every single person. Well, I guess they could, but it's not that kind of game. So I'm going to go and get myself a gun, and I know there's guns down here, and I will leave the surprise as to whether or not I will need the gun later or not, but I'm going to get a gun. 
In my last video, I actually just shot these two geezers in the head. I'm not going to do this Because I don't actually know how it's going to react. So ammo. And I'm going to just put my gun. Not that it's a clue, but I'm going to put my gun handily in my inventory. And you can adjust the order of this as well, which is... Uh, I could, you could just move them around, so I'm actually going to add that there as my second option. Because you can use your mouse wheel to go through these, or you can just use the number keys just to flick through them. But I'm not going to wield my gun, not that anyone actually cares. So, you're a train... And actually, you've got to look at these lines, because you can die quite easily. And I have been hit by a train. You, When you cross these lines, you need to make sure that there's not a train coming, because this is a working, busy Soviet train station. And what we're going to come to now is, for me, something that has just been worked on so hard is just the model of this train. Now, I'm, no, I'm not a train enthusiast at all. I could not give a damn about trains in reality. Look at this. This is, and I know this was the same train that was in my other video, this is, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. It's a beast. And I, again, I know nothing about trains and certainly nothing about Soviet trains. It looks like it could definitely be. Look at the wear and tear in here. It's scratch marks. And you can interact with little things like this. Just look at this. Yeah, you can. Actually, I can't do it at the minute because it's not letting me because it wants me to do something linear. But when the game is free flowing, I can. Oh, no, it's just let me do it. Look, I can just open these windows. Look at that. It's little things like that. It's not even relevant to anything. But it's so cool. And you'll see more of this train later. But um, it does want you to go through a process uh, of starting. You have to excuse my key tapping if you can hear that, but it wants you to go through a very, very precise process. So, once you get going, a lot of this tutorial stuff will just go and you can do what you want, but um, just have to bear with it, of course, it wants to teach you. So you have to go external to the train to be able to look at it, and that's a bit annoying in a way, you have to look at the wing mirrors of the train to be able to look externally, whereas I'd rather just press a button and just get to the external camera that way press T and this is a very important part of the game now these are all green apart from the bit we're going to change in a minute which is red you have to maintain your own train and you as you go through train stations in the game you have to pick up parts and repair your own train uh, otherwise it will break you will die you will fail um, that's the crux of it you are a mechanic you are a train driver you are seemingly a gangster with a machine gun it's I, I don't know what kind of career path this guy has taken on but you are doing everything so we need to come out of this mode and I'm kind of glad I played this before doing this video because otherwise I'm just going to be sitting here clueless although I'm probably gonna get it all totally wrong in a minute anyway um, but anywho let's go into our cabin and take this off now our wrench is not in our hands so actually let's just replace our milk we'll pick our wrench we'll undo this speedometer because we would like to know how fast we're going to go. And then we'll take the old part off. Because remember it was red on that uh, view earlier. So we know it's a, a dud. And I think we just threw it on the floor. Why not? It's no use to us. Let's go and get ourselves a nice new one. And it's in our inventory. We're just going to need to equip it in a minute. That's the thing. And I think I raised this in my review video. You can't use immediately the items from here you have to equip them into your hand and then use them so let's pop it in place of that and then we'll put the speedometer on pick the wrench to put the screws back on screw it in place i love this it's just very micromanagey but why not it's what it's supposed to be it's a simulator right so it tells us to inspect the parts, which I just explained about looking at the status of the colour, making sure bits don't run out. And this will talk us through how to start the engine. And it, it's probably a 20-step process before we can even move. And the game doesn't expect you to remember any of that. And we will... Oh, better get my hand. There we go. That's on. It talks you through it the first time, but you'll notice here there's a locomotive operating manual. And there is a point in this where you need to go through this. It explains how to start the engine signals explains those explains braking there's always that to refer to unfortunately you 
can't just print it off or something to have in front of you you keep needing to go to there so next step we need to go to the radio turn that on and we're just going to whitter on about our mission which is taking some coal away in a moment okay so now we can don't, we can press that if we want to listen to the last message, but we don't. I understand what this is saying. So it's just basically tells us we've got to go and pick up that coal. Can you see that flashing there? I'm going to go and grab that. So first step first, turn the pantograph power on. We can see here, and it's some great tooltips. Love myself a tooltip. If you t uh, hover over that, it tells you that there's power. We now need to switch the pantograph on, um, the two pantographs on. And pantographs, I have learned that these things here that connect to the track. Um, sorry, the electricity from the train, which are these things here that look like metal aerials or something. They connect to the the, uh, the mains. So they need to be up, of course, to connect to that. So now we have to turn the heating on because you'll notice that the temperature is very cold and we should not be in minus, uh, sorry, five degrees. Uh, make sure that you do not open the windows. So you can play with these, but keep them closed because we need to stay nice and warm. Let's put the compressors on. I've got no idea really what any of these things are. And then you'll notice this one filling up again, a lovely tooltip, must be four kilos. Switch on the case KVC, don't know what that is. And then you'll notice on here, it needs to be reset. So of course to reset it, it's obviously the button next door, the light goes off, excellent. It's now working, switch the BV1 on. But of course, that needs to be set reset as well because that's now flashing on there. Love a tooltip. So press that. Released. Now it's gone out. It's working. And that means the engines are now on. You can kind of hear it ticking over. I don't know if the volume's loud enough in this video, but um, I'm, I could just turn it up a bit actually. It would hurt because it doesn't get too loud. Just back it up to about 60 odd percent or something like that. And that'll do, won't it? bit more maybe there we go that'll do it's not gonna be enough to drown me out although you might wish it to drown me out but anyway so if you lower the pantographs and raise them you have to reset and go through this procedure again uh, we have to turn the engine cooling at low speed because we're not gonna be traveling too far the block braking needs to be released and we need to get these brake pressures up so they can be done by filling into service or releasing charge, sorry. You'll see they're now going up. That's fine. And now we can set this into service, which means we can now steady that off a little bit. So it just dips it down a bit. Then we can shut off the supply and bring that down a bit more now we can set the service to set it to service to stabilize the pressure all quite complicated I assume this is all real I mean you can only assume this is all legitimate um, got no other assumption to make uh, so if you want to set it more precisely use the main brake handle this one here to release and charge to fill the pressure and shut off to stop it basically in essence uh, turn the VU system, so there's a thing up here as well, we have to press that, I don't know what it is. And that's the signalisation system or something like that. So now we've got to go to the engine room, which is this one. You can, oh, this is what I want to show you actually, look at this, this is cool. Look, all these moving parts, stuff that can break. Look at it, it's so cool. But with this, we just need to click this, I think. There we go. Oh, no, we want to go forwards. There we go. We've got to set the signalisation. There's a lot to do here. And apparently I've got a key to turn there. Turn this tension off, which is something that makes sure you're, you're not falling asleep at the helm, I suppose. Okay, so yellow light means that we basically can't go more than 40 miles an hour. Yellow light and red light means you have to stop the next railway signal and red light means you've got to stop immediately okay so that's basically it now we've got to go to the second locomotive because bear in mind there's a locomotive working the other end 
of parallel to us. And we have just to apparently switch this thing on. Um, this. And then need to go back to the stop a little. First section and you don't have to remember all of this, as I say, it's in the wiki, and there is a lot to to do. Now I've got to set the position to M, which is forwards. Not any of those. M, there we go. Now apparently we can start to move. It takes a while, doesn't it? Now we've got to set this to one, which is our speed controller, effectively. <laughs> And it just starts us off slowly. If you whack this straight up to max, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, you'll see a bit later on, you gradually increase the speed. But there's a white light that comes up on one of these buttons. And if you accelerate too quickly or push this handle up too quickly, that white light will effectively cut the power of the engine and you just grind to a halt. So we need to go slowly. And it tells you there about the white light. You see, you won't be able to go any faster. I'll go a little bit quicker because we will be here till Christmas. And there's a switch. We have to get out and physically change the switch in reverse and pick up our humongous load of coal, which is ultimately our mission. Hopefully I won't fail this mission, because you are given a lot of time. Um, but if I do, I do. It's just to demonstrate what I think is going to be an excellent game. Look at the detail. You've got all of these old trucks. You've got people walking around, people who work here. And in my last video, I shot a lot of these people, because why not? But in this, I'm playing very seriously. But it's full of life, this place. And as we go through some of the other places in this video, the whole area or areas are full of life. It's not just a dormant wasteland. So let's get back in the cab. And see if we can go. We can check our speed here, just hover over it. So we'll bring the speed down in a bit. We'll just trudge along quite nicely at this speed, there's no rush. We can press the horn as well, look at these. We've got a horn and a whistle and some sand, which is like a brake thing, which I'm not going to press because I've got no interest in doing that. Maybe a smidge quicker, just for the hell of it. Sometimes it's hard to grab onto this. You have to. Look, there we go. So you've got to work your way around it in different sides. So we need to clear the switch. Okay, I'm going to cut the power now. Hopefully, if it lets me, to go down this side, of course, because it's fiddly. There we go, now we're down to zero speed, and I'll apply some brakes in a bit. It might not need to, so let's just go and have a look and make sure we go past that first. Yeah, we're good, right, let's stick some brakes on. So we come down to here, and it's not going to let me brake. Is it going to let me brake? Oh, it might do in a minute, because it wants me to clear it. Do you want me to clear it a bit more? A little bit more. Because during the tutorial, it won't actually let you do anything yourself. You do get given free reign actually at some point. Just there we go. Right, that's it. So now we can set it to zero. Now we can apply the brakes. Come out to and okay, got to do that. Whoa, that's too much brake. Okay, I think it just did that, but that's fine. The train stopped. Either way, the train stop. That's not how I remember it, but anyway. I'm sure I didn't do the locomotive brake last time. I probably did. But. Okay, so we switch this switch. Look at those tracks move. That's so cool. Can't do it again because of the tutorial thing, but look at that. That's excellent. No automation here. The poor sod had to get out of the train in the freezing cold. Minus 29, bear in mind. Hopefully you're wearing some sort of hat. Uh, switch it into reverse. MR. And take the brake off. And now we can set the main handle to one. And we'll go backwards. Bear with it. It will do it. 
There we go. And we have to hit the, the, the cargo at 5 kilometers an hour. So we can't go too fast, but we could probably put it up to 4. Okay, this is a very, very, very slow slog, the cargo now. Um, it doesn't want us to go any quicker, which is fine, because you don't want to smash the cargo. And I don't want to have to redo this, because I've already been talking a fair bit, so... Let's try and do it correctly. We'll just take a look around. Look, there's people hard at work, as I say. You can look around the map within the distance, small distance of your train. You can't just go off over there and look at that city, for example, which, by the way, looks really cool. I don't know if you try to walk. You're probably limited as to how far you can go. I doubt you can walk to the city either. It doesn't matter. Look at it. It's atmospheric. And I must admit, even at this point, my FPS is down to about 40 because there is so much going on here. But it's running quite smoothly for the most part. How fast are we going? Yeah, let's just cut that speed right down now. Okay, it's going a bit slow now. Let's just keep it to five. So we'll keep that on position two. We'll cut it down much later on because this this train can hit this at a little bit of speed. It doesn't need to be a dead hit in terms of going like 0 0.1 mile an hour. One mechanism I find really weird is to use the mouse wheel to increase the speed of camera travel. So as I flick the mouse wheel forward, it... I better turn that off, actually. Get down to one. Oh, off, actually. It's um, yeah, the mouse wheel controls the movement of the camera speed, which I find is strange. But this should just crash gently into this now. There we go. And now it's coupled. It's hooked in. Lovely amount of detail there. Look at that. That is excellent. Okay, so we, of course, now need to start moving. We will eventually come to a stop because it's a very heavy track. So we've got 59 minutes to get to uh, Novosibirsk, Glavny. And I don't know if that's a real place. I should probably have a look. And that's what we need to do. So let's set the brake to one just to stop any movement. It just explains a bit about braking here and putting up with the pressure. Emergency braking drains the pressure more, of course. Um, hopefully we won't have to do too much emergency braking. And now we've come to a stop. We just need to prepare the brakes again. Switch the handle to M, which is forward, and now you'll notice if I just stick this into one, or when I stuck it into one, it did move. Now it's very dictatorial at this point. Come on. Position it exactly where you want, or it wants. Now you will need to sit down, that's just basically crouch. But I don't see any point in sitting down. Um, I don't know what effect that has. That hangover bar keeps going up. I don't actually know how to deal with that. But you just get more and more hungover and I see no point in sitting down. You might find there was a slight glitch in the video. That's because I had to pause to go for a, a wee actually. But, uh, I'm back now, and as you can see, we've barely moved an inch. So we're going to ramp this up a little bit. In fact, if I just show you that white light, there you go. See this on there? That's too much. It can't accelerate because it's probably something like wheel spin, which is too much pressure. But we've got 10 on there. We can go up to 40 miles an hour, and we're nowhere near that. We're at 5, so let's be bar more. <laughs> Let's have a look at the train now. We have speed that up. Look at that. It's a long train. 
uh, there's a long train and it's full of presumably what would have powered the Soviet Union at that time which is pure coal I say at that time I don't actually know when this is um, I assume this is definitely set sometime during the Soviet Union because of the um, the age of some of this stuff but I guess in real life they're just driving around it things like this there's a door there, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, that door if you want. Let's not do that. Let's keep ourselves in here. Just in case there's a bear or something. And I know there is bears in this game as you go through the wilderness. I mean, bear in mind the Trans-Siberian Railway is absolutely gargantuan in length. And you go through the wilderness in this full game. And I know this isn't the full game, but the intention is you have to go through the wilderness and hope that you don't die of thirst or hunger or something. But there are bears and things that want to really hurt you in this game. And I think the gun might come in handy. But uh, I should probably drink something, so let's... While we're accelerating, let's just bring in some milk. Because that's the obvious thing to drink. Perhaps water was too dangerous. Get a nice animation of the... the milk that's brought that down a little bit. Let's just bin the milk off, because we're probably going to need food before we're going to need milk again so make some bread and we'll have some bread later again no idea what to do with the hangover thing but okay, can we bring this up any further now because we've got a bit of momentum so we can now get to position 15 without complaining lots going on here there's a work shop there's some guys over there look just doing some work on the lorry I think or just standing there doing nothing. It's just lots to do and see, I think. It's just brilliant. With the dirt on top of here as well. It's just a relic. It really is. I mean, even if this game, even if the gameplay was a big pile of shit, they've done immensely well in actually visually making this a masterpiece. But I actually don't think the game is a big part of shit to be fair. I think it's very good. And has the potential to be pretty, very good. Okay, we're approaching that 40. Oh, here we go. We can go 60 anyway, though. So this is cool. So we're coming up to a crossroads. And look at all of those Soviet era cars waiting for us. It's an interactive world. Not from our point of view of interacting with it, but there's stuff going on. Okay, we're plodding along quite nicely now. We're getting some speed up. I don't think we're going to get too much more out of this beast, but... Something does happen in a bit, and I don't get why... Um, it just does. I don't know if it's to challenge us, but you'll see in a moment. And I found it a bit annoying, especially because I couldn't work out an explanation. If there's an explanation, then fine, but um, you'll see in a minute. It gets us to restart all of these settings. It's probably just to test us, um, and it needs me to refer to the guide, so you're going to have to forgive me when I look back at what to do. Although I might actually remember now. I've done this a couple of times, but let's see. Now, can you see up there? It's telling us about a railroad sign saying, prepare to lower the pantographs. You remember the pantographs are what provides the power. So we're going to have to take the pantographs down, which means we're going to lose power. We're going to stop. Now, why they want us to do that, I don't know. We don't need to put them down just yet. I think this is a sign here that uh, you know, lower the pantograph. It wants us to do it. The tutorial is telling us we've lost power. Speed is now coming down. It's not telling us to brake, so let's just let it roll. And you'll see what happens in a moment. You might get away with this, because what I had to do before, when I put the pantographs back up, was I didn't really know, so I literally started the whole process again. But thinking about it, I think if we just look at the lights on the dashboard, 
and it will tell us what we need to do rather than dick around with putting the heat on and stuff like that again. So now we can put the pantographs back up. Now I think if we just try and deal with the lights we might be okay rather than having to go through the whole of that starting block. We've still got the pressures in the right place, so it's not that. So it's the KBC reset and that reset. Now we should be back. As long as we get rid of the white light now, we should be back to some normality now. Look. Let's just see if our speed starts coming. Yes! So actually I've learned something there. You don't need to go through the whole reset. Because what I did before was literally just switched everything off, put all of these bits back to how they were, went back through to the locomotive time. Toggling that, toggling that back up there, it did me no use. Um, as well, oh yeah, look at this. We bring the sunrise down. Uh, I'll come to what that guy is saying. But put the wipers on. Look at that. That's so cool. Um, we can't speed down now. I think we've gone over 45. Right down. So yeah, basically it's saying here that we've got a little mission we should be saying. We have to you're probably reading this until there's a bridge coming up, we have to knock it out. How do we knock out a bridge? I said that. How do we knock out a bridge? Say, well, wait for further instructions, it says. We should be down to 40 miles an hour at this point, so Yellow and red lines stop before the next signal. Okay, well, let's just cut that off entirely because I've got no idea where that signal is. Let's face it, they wouldn't have had the, the equipment to tell them. So I'm just going to whack some braking on. I think there's a signal up there, so let's just bring this into a bit more braking. Not an emergency at this point. locomotive and you can hear it creaking under all these pressures. Let's stick on to emergency brakes. It doesn't matter, we can always recharge it. for that. Let's get us back. This didn't have this makes it more interesting, doesn't it? Let's get this thing in reverse. Oh god. This did not happen the first time. If it's in reverse, we're gonna die in a minute. Um oh Lord. This is not good. Is he moving? Oh my god he is. on. I feel like the Titanic trying to avoid an iceberg. Come on. Come on, move, 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 move. <laughs> this is my fault. I should have stopped a lot earlier. But it keeps interesting. Still got plenty of time. I get the impression that, that train is slowing down to match me a little bit. Maybe I'm panicking. 
unwisely. He's beeping me. He's got every right to as well, to be fair. I kind of go a bit gung-ho on the old brakes there, but I felt I had no choice. It's much harder to slow a train down that's got the full uh, load on, you know. He'll get past me now quite comfortably. In fact, let's go and watch him. Here he goes, look. No one driving it, look. Yeah, he's probably very angry. What's he got on the back here? Some sort of oil, I reckon. This would be the lifeblood oil and coal. And yeah. Well, that kept it quite interesting. I actually did crap myself for a short while. Let's whack this into forward, shall we? Bulls up. I was getting so carried away with the speed there, I never got the train to go so fast. This is fine. The time, 44 minutes, trust me, we're going to be well within there. We're going to have something interesting to do at a moment. And let's just say, let's get quite clear of the bridge. Remember, we have to destroy this bridge, so obviously we don't want to just be sat on it. let's just have a quick look at some of those parts and see how they're wearing because they do so look at these look our hover over them our heaters are losing power obviously if you freeze you will die so these are things you have to repair some things in yellow like shock absorbers brake cylinders you have to keep on top of all this so there's a guy at the other end of the bridge called Nikita and we have to stop the train near Nikita get out and see what Nikita has to say. We will see him in a minute. Soviet winter. Look at this. This is just how you probably imagine it to be. I think the frozen river is just literally inches of ice. Thick that is. We're shifting along quite nicely, and we need to make sure we actually stop this time. Although it's my understanding there's no designated stop zone, we just need to stop near enough Nikita. Yes, there he is, look, he's not far away. But equally, I don't want it to be too slow because we do actually want to finish this game. Once we're clear of the bridge, I'm going to start to put the brakes on. Let's cut the power, though. And the other way. Okay, let's put some brakes on. We did learn our lesson last time, hopefully. Let's There's 
doesn't matter if we um, actually stop a little bit before him anyway, actually, it's fine. And we're going to be going uphill as well, so this is going to take some of the edge off the speed. And it's important that we clear our coal of the bridge. Look at this as well, look, there's life outside the window. It's not just barren, look. Stuff's happening. Okay, there's a bit more break. Sorry. There's Nikita. Wave at Nikita. Might eat some bread actually while we're waiting. That's what you do, isn't it, when you just eat the bread. There we go. Lovely. Right, well our brakes are on. I made the incredible mistake earlier of jumping out mid-movement. Uh, you'll see it's starting to get a bit more glitchy now, but um, oh yeah, I was gonna say if you jump out when it's moving, you will die. I don't know how fast that cutoff point is, but I'm not prepared to risk it. That is fine. Right. Don't trust Nikita. Let's get our Kalashnikov ready, just in case he turns on us. No spoilers. Ради этого момента я трудился часы. Дни и недели на пролет. Как пиротехник, я творил волшебство в воздухе. Разноцветные вспышки и узоры — это словно мои кисти, рисующие восхитительные картины в небе. Quite nice gun. Right, have we got to collect something off him? Oh, maybe we've got to use our hands. There we go. Я ухожу отсюда. Я всегда должен действовать профессионально. Okay, so we've got the package off him, and we've also got some explosives. He's not going to run away, I suspect. And just in case he frames us, we're going to die. In the case he's not dead. And one of the bomb. There we go. Right. Got what we want from him. That's fine. I held no love for the man. Okay, let's go back over to the bridge. And plant our explosives. I must admit, I did that the first time as well. And it was a risk because sometimes you might lose the game um, because you're killing an ally, so to speak. But I don't know who he is from Adam. But. Um, it could have been a double stitch up or something. He could have gone back and got someone to kill me. So actually, maybe I've been clever and cut out some of the tricky part, part of the game. Sorry, just put that. Tricky part of the game. Either way, I don't get punished for it, so don't worry. Just a bit of a walk, this. You get 15 minutes to literally run back to this point and part a charge. It's very forgiving. Um, let's put that in place of there. And we'll pop the explosive charge. There we go. And now we've really got to run, actually, because this doesn't give us much time. We can turn around, actually, and run backwards. Yes, we can. It will bang in a moment. the bridge gone and five hundred dollars which is a curious currency for a game like this however we will ignore it okay so he did give us two things didn't he he gave us the explosives and the box for blueprints and how, how to make bombs we need to give that to a chap called Boris at the train station Novosibirsk, Glavny, um, probably pronouncing that wrong every single time. Let's get this beast moving again. There's no reason why we shouldn't just be able to continue now, so let's just take the brake off. 
everything's charging quite nicely. Let's bring it down to about four, as they said. I'm just going to go up anyway. What's the point in that? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, the train works. Let's just move. One to start us off. I'm rolling backwards. It's no good. Okay, a bit more power in, aren't we? Let's just go for it. As much as we can. There we go. We're rolling. And our limit is 60 kilometers an hour. So let's pedal to the metal. This is uphill as well, by the way, and bear in mind how much tonnage we're carrying here is insane, so it's going to be a little bit of time. Bit, a bit of speed. As soon as we start hitting this downhill, things do improve. I'm sure there's things I can do to improve the efficiency of this, you know, if you really knew what you were doing. There's so many buttons, there all these other ones as well. Like you've got lights and all sorts of random stuff. More whistles, more lights, more buttons. There's a lot of interactive things in here, so obviously not everything is interactive, but there's a lot of interactive things. It's such a good looking game too, I think. Okay, we'll take this as far as we can. So we're currently only 2.9 kilometers from the railway station and the signal that we have to keep an eye out for as well. 2.3. Now got a bit of downhill coming now, so we should start to get a move on. Did you notice how um, Nikita's body had disappeared as well? Randomly. It's a bit naughty that, I don't like it when games do that, it's like it never happened. up a little bit more before we have to start slowing down, which, believe me, will not be long. As I said earlier, this, this, this track is absolutely gigantic uh, in terms of length, and if the game, when it's released in full, gives you the genuine full length of the Trans-Siberian Railway to play with, there is going to be a lot that you can do here. And so much scenery as well through absolute... I mean, this is all quite built up. I mean, we're going through human civilization a lot of the time. Most of the Trans-Siberian Railway is in the middle of absolutely nothing for miles on end. And it would be so cool to go through that just barren wasteland, bears, and you've got to keep yourself fed and watered and warm and if the risk of death, and guns as well, you know, it's going to be a risk to your life in that sense, then Great, there's going to be gang warfare in this as well, and there's obviously some sort of gang element to this already. It's great, but obviously, yellow coming up, so it's telling us to slow down at the top. Obviously, 40 mile an hour will be the limit, we're not going to go past 40, we'll keep an eye. We'll start to see the FPS is now dropping. I'm now getting about 36, and it will kind of get a bit worse, unfortunately. So, I do apologize for any lag, I could turn the graphics down. But actually, I'm not going to because I want you to get a feel of what this can do visually, um, so I can actually live with the slight frame drop issue. Right, this is classed as a dangerous place, and I don't know why. I don't know if that's because the curve is quite tight or because there's people walking around. I'm not sure. Yeah, we're 40 miles or 40 kph. Let's bring the speed down a little bit. End of the dangerous place. 
This is so ominous. All these people walking around this is so cool. Okay, so you're going to come to a little signal in a minute. And then we're going to stop, get out, and then switch the track around. Get some speed up again, otherwise I'd be afraid. Let's see, 900 and something, it's called 900 meters. Dropping down to about 25. There's a lot going on here, and I think my graphics card is probably struggling. As I said in other videos, I've got a 1060, so there's going to be things that it just simply can't do. This is a very detailed, lively, real life world game. So it's going to have a lot going on. And this isn't down to the game, by the way, so, you know, it's just down to my hardware. Uh, I wouldn't want to detract from the quality of this, because the developer has done an absolutely cracking job for making this look superb. Just look at all of this. slowness now. Gotta stop the train before the switch, so let's just make sure we actually do this time, shall we? Because we can always run ahead, switch it, and come back to the train. a lot of these components we'll have a look in a minute if I remember to see how much damage we might be incurring now. Okay. I don't quite know why there's so many staff around. I mean a lot of them don't do anything but I guess at least they're there. And some of them move so and there goes the track. All right and back to the train. And then we've got to stop the train in the marked area, which will be coming up in a moment. We've still got over half an hour. We'll get this done very soon. Okay, right. Uh, close the door, keep the warmth in. And let's the braking. go again and you'll see there's a red zone just up there and we need to stop inside that. Don't know why and when you're supposed to press those but we'll cope. All those bastards just hanging around they could have pulled the switch for me actually couldn't they but no. Yeah, I was going to say, let's have a look at the damage, because I think there's going to be lots of things now starting to, to wear. What else have we got going on here? The compressor coolers starting to have it. The compressor safeguard. More compressor coolers. Axle box bearing. Look at all these things. I mean, if we were to be playing this much longer, which we won't be, these heaters need replacing. Because... If we were driving the train with no heat, then we are literally going to die. So, um, no. that's no good.
slow acceleration. Isn't it? Which is a bit annoying because it takes so long to slow down as well, so you can never get much speed up. So just trundling along this little bit of track here to get to the red. It's just a very slow process, but you have to take it for what it is. It's a simulator. got to talk to Boris and Boris as you'll see in a minute is about three feet away we have over an hour to find him and I don't know what people are doing I think that the time they're giving you despite it being a prologue playtest seems to be crazily generous but um, it's fine Very much nearly at the end of the uh, the red zone now, but we're moving slow enough, and I'm not going to worry about the brakes. I've already put some headlights on, actually. I haven't even thought to do that. Do they show up quite nicely? Okay. We can light up our cabin. Look at that. This is. Just love it. Just the detail is beautiful. Projector light. Don't know what that is. A bit of break. Damn it. Getting too excited. I think that might actually be spot on. There we go. I think that's okay. I think it will allow for that. Um, has it taken? Is that? Did that switch the light on? Sure you can light. Yes, it was. Look at that. Why didn't I do this earlier? I can't seem to pull out that camera anymore over here. It's sort of stuck. I can't go any further that way. But that looks glorious. Love that. Okay. Right. Well, we're stopped. Okay. We've got to uncouple our train, though we're pretty much in there, but that's fine. $500 just for uncoupling the train. Now, I was going to say, just watch out here, because I've been run over, and these trains move. There's some passengers waiting on the platforms. I love how there's not necessarily, in all cases, I think there is here, but there's stairs and bridges and things went across. Not always the case. See, look at this one. Off that goes. It's a hazard. I'm praying this one doesn't move. Because the lights aren't on. There we go. Okay, Boris is over here somewhere. can't get on these trains or anything. That would be quite cool, even if you couldn't drive them. Just, But then I suppose if the trains are scheduled to move, then it will just carry you away, so perhaps that's why. It looks like the blue one's a passenger, the green one's a freight. But just look how lively this is, it just looks... It looks so real. It's unbelievably good. Um, I think we need to go into here. There's a shop as well, so that's for your foodstuffs. Um, I mean, I won't bother, but if we need more food, you can go there, and there's scrapyards and depots where you can get the parts for your train. Let's go see Big Bozza. Give him his... Interesting, what is in the chapter? Give him his parcel, shall we? Let's put it into... Give me a packet. Five. Can I give you his parcel? You will find that the game ends at this point. Can we shoot him? Yeah. There we go. Well, I just got in there, look. Just in time. Um, but yeah, you can see early access. Thanks for playing. That is the end. There's no more. Um, it will be added to the full version of my wish list. I don't think there'll be any more playtests or releases prior, so I have done a review of the game prior to the state of this, which is a very short version, just picking up the cold train, that's it. This expands on that, 
feels like it's worth sharing with you. The next time, hopefully, will be the full game. Let's see where it goes from here, see what else they do. But I'm absolutely buzzing for this. I think it's so much fun. The realism is immense on the train. Guns look quite cool. There might even be a story here. It just seems like there's a bit of everything or something for everybody here. But um, yeah, it's been a pleasure to show you. Thank you.